After three months of teasing and waiting, Season 2 is finally here. Rare adds a new four type to spice things up. They added some more busy work for the Merchant Alliance, tweaked their renown system and added a slew of bug fixes. But does the waiting pay off or is this just a teaser for Season 3? Let's find out. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I do my best to play a fair amount of the update before making these videos. So if you like that, you are at the right place and subscribing really helps. So before we start discussing these new forts, let's quickly go over the new additions to the Renown system. The Season 2 reward view has been redesigned, providing more clarity between rewards earned for free and those unlocked with the additional purchase of the Plunder Pass. And a new slew of trials has been added and refreshed should you struggle leveling up. Sadly, level 100 is still the maximum level. I personally would like to be able to still earn rewards like gold, so you have an extra incentive to keep playing and completing these trials. But you know, maybe next season. Progressing throughout Season 2 will also reward pirates with new cosmetics like some reskins, merfolk sales and lucky clothing cosmetics. So are these hints to a merfolk update or card games being added to the game? Maybe. Rare has been hinting at these kinds of additions for a while now, but they still need to deliver. In the previous updates we also had frostbite cosmetics, but no icy region has been added. So are these new cosmetics hints to future content or not? Only time will tell. Pirate Legends can also earn the Athena's Might Cutlass and the Shackled Phantom Hull. Nice rewards, but they cannot beat the legendary curse from Season 1. Obviously, the Plunder Pass is back and just like the last season, you are the best person to decide if this pass offers the value you are looking for. But as an extra incentive, you will be able to earn an additional 250 Ancient Coins when you buy it, which is a nice improvement over last season. However, it doesn't sit right that the Plunder Pass mainly features Emporium items and some of my crewmates are not buying cosmetics anymore out of fear they may come to the Plunder Pass later. And let's be fair, if you spend $10 on the Shrouded Ghost costume only for it to appear in the Plunder Pass later, it, you know, it just feels bad. One last thing I want to mention is the Barrel Hide emote, which is also one of the rewards. Yeah, I like it. It finally gives us fat pirates somewhere nice to hide. And I do hope we will see some awesome content regarding this barrel. Maybe even on this channel. So, let's talk about the main addition of this update. The Forge of Fortune. Every 3 hours or so, these will activate and are easily recognizable by this broken skull in the sky. You not only get this visual image, but an ominous bellow is also blasted across the waves, alerting the entire server that meat is back on the menu. If you are expecting an entirely new fort, I have to disappoint you. These new forts of fortune make use of the regular forts, with the two difference being the enemies you encounter and the treasure you get. Same, same, but different. But still same! Just like before, you will be fighting waves of skeletons, but with a few surprises. The next thing an Ash and Nora comes out and I was just very, very confused. <laughs> and yeah, the treasure you get is pretty massive. Multiple fort items, multiple Athena treasures, a chest of legends, gemstones and other high value loot. So doing these is a great way to increase your reputation for almost every faction. But be warned, because these forts will also attract a lot of seasoned players, myself included. Maybe some of you already know, but when CFPs just released, there was only one world event. And that was a regular skull fort appearing every 3 hours or so. Just like the early days, I also expect a lot of players will hop servers in hopes of finding an active fort of fortune and duke it out. And if you listen to the podcast of the developers, revoking this early day feeling is absolutely what they intended with these forts. It's like when the ice cream van arrives at Rare in the summer <laughs> and everyone's just gone. I'm also convinced tackling and stealing these forts is going to be great content for all you streamers out there. So overall, I'm pretty positive about these forts, but I also have some complaints. 
Like I said before, a lot of players will be hopping for these forts and you can now easily buy supplies at outposts like cannonballs to stock your ship fast. More on that later. And a lot of players might feel this is unfair. I'm not one of those, but I do recognize it might be a tough time for new players. So my advice is get a galleon together with your best mates or try tackling these forts while in an alliance. Just, you know, don't forget to betray them afterwards to get all the booty. Also, I'm a bit disappointed we get no original enemy type for these forts. Even though Rare loves reskinning basically everything in this game, <laughs> uh, I would have liked a different Ashen Lord as the final boss. Just make it gold or glowy or something. And before I forget, there's also a new commendation you can complete by tackling these forts and it can be found under your Order of Souls reputation. So, if you're a new player, I would advise getting familiar with regular skull forts and Ashen Lords first. Which kinda sucks, since this is the main edition of Season 2. There is, however, something else that has been added. So, let's have a look. Everybody's favorite faction is getting yet another edition. At every outpost you can now buy different types of commodities like raw sugar or some assorted gemstones. What is available and in stock is always changing and you are tasked with delivering certain commodities from one outpost to another. Prices are decided if those commodities are in demand or not. To be aware of this you can check the merchant inventories on the outposts when they work, at least. So buy when an outpost has a surplus and sell it at those outposts looking for those supplies. Pretty simple. Just don't forget to collect your crate after you purchase one. This new addition is great if you want to make big money while also doing other voyages at the same time. And I don't really like them, since there are tons of other ways to make good money and all of them are more fun than this. Not only this, but you also need to be a Merchant Alliance Emissary if you want to do these new trade routes, limiting your options. But in all fairness, they are great to combine with Lost Ship and Voyages, especially if you keep that sweet Emissary Multiplier in mind. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing. And don't forget to check out the new commendations regarding these commodities. You can find them under your Merchant Reputation pane. I also love the design of these crates. Yeah. Great effort, boys. So yeah, I might seem harsh about this new edition, but the main reason to me is that it feels like an unwanted add-on. I'm also too lazy to check the inventories each time. Yeah, it's, it's good for money, but so is doing this new fort, and I know which of those two I prefer. Also, last season, the Merchant Alliance already got new voyages, which are subjectively more fun than this. And, like I hinted at before, you can now buy supply crates as well. A feature players have been asking for since day one. Specifically, you can buy a crate with 50 planks, 15 cannonballs, 15 bananas, or an empty storage crate. All of these are incredibly handy for various reasons. Even the 50 bananas can be used if you plan to transport pigs for that current session. But you know, they are pretty useless in any other situation. So I hope they will change this to coconuts in the next update. But overall, yeah, great addition, really nice to spend your gold on something else besides cosmetics and voyages. So normally I would go over all the additions to the Pirate Emporium, but to keep this video to the point I'm just going to go over the cosmetics that stick out to me. And oh boy, we do have some nice additions like this awesome Dark Warsmith skeleton costume and the equally impressive ship. I did actually do some sailing with this cosmetics and I really wish we had this set instead of the Dark Adventurer ship set. I specifically like these hellish sails that will most certainly deliver your enemy some poopy pants. And also don't forget to pick up the Thigh Slapper Eat mode, which is free and it sucks, but it's free, so it's nice. Speaking about emotes, some sounds have been added to previous ones, like the sounds to this Showboater Cutlass emote. 
Emergent Skeleton Captains and Skeleton Captains on Forts now drop gold pouches on defeat, which is nice. They updated the Emissary system. We will be able to earn new rewards. This is great since it will give us something different than sales and we have another reason to mix up our emissaries. With Ashen Lords and the Flameheart event being showcased up front as part of the world event rotation for some time, their frequency is now reduced. The likelihood that players can be targeted by the Kraken immediately after a previous world event has also been reduced. They also completely fixed hit registration. Every shot made will now 100% connect and come through as damage. <laughs> no, sorry. It's, it still sucks. And we also get a new event called Reapers vs the World, which is promoting and rewarding both keeping and stealing emissary flags. Needless to say, I am looking forward to completing these goals. Also, one of the rewards will reflect on which company lost the most flags during the event, which sounds really interesting, but I'm not sure if I like that. And we also have some reskins, like some clothing, and this aristocrat ship set, which looks nice, but you know, it doesn't really excite me. There are also some more minor additions and bug fixes that I won't go over, but I will leave a link to the patch notes. So check it out if you are interested in that. So, is this a good update? Yeah, not really. If it was just a fort, it would have been slightly better than season 1, but the unwanted merchant mission brings it down, at least for me. Again, it's the perfect time to hop into Sea of Thieves if you never played it before. But with the exception of these new forts, the older players will probably find a more gratifying experience playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I do hope I don't sound too negative. I love this game and I want to see it grow to its fullest potential. And yes, I do still think the renowned progression is great and even the new forts are a welcome addition. But lately, Rare has done a lot of teasing, be it by Twitter, in game with Duke, and even now with all these Merfolk cosmetics. But where is this content? Because I'm not seeing it. With their recent podcast, they re-established their intention of releasing a big addition at the start of the season and do smaller updates in the additional months. So I don't want to sound entitled or anything, but when the developers assure you that they are working on big content and these seasons are a great way to get bigger updates out, I want to believe them. But spending 3 months on just refitting old content and adding some new cosmetics is, well, disappointing. And it just makes it hard to believe all the promises they make. I do still think good updates are coming. But to me, this season feels a bit underwhelming, to put it politely. So, I do hope you get where I'm coming from. But what about you? I'm just a guy that wants a lot of meat on his sandwich. But how do you feel about season 2? Let me know in the comments because I do read all of your reactions. And also, don't forget to subscribe. More stuff is always coming to this channel. Like a new podcast episode where you will get the unfiltered opinions of me and other CFTs content creators. So stay tuned for that. As for now, best of luck tackling these new forts and I will see you in the next video. Take care.